okay uh, guys let's continue and this time we will be looking at physics and uh, the the chapter would be reflection and refraction of light and here are some of the topics that we will we will try to look at maybe in this tutorial or maybe in the next tutorial but it is very very important that we we try to understand what is happening here so first of all we will have some reading so that we are in tune uh, with uh, the introduction in this reflection and refraction of light so as we read they say light they say that light has a dual nature so there are two sides to this light so it can be a particle and it can also be a wave in different experiments of course in some experiments it acts as a particle so particle meaning uh it has uh we know that particles have uh, the nucleus they have uh, uh the electrons protons neutrons they have quarks uh, down quarks up quarks and gluons and all that while in others it acts like a wave so it has this wave nature so in some experiments it is a, a particle it has uh, the nucleus and everything that surrounds that and in some other experiments light behaves as a wave so waves we know they have frequencies and wavelength and periods and all that so this is uh the other side to this to this uh uh something that we call light this energy that we refer to as light in this and the next two chapters we concentrate on the aspects of light that are best understood through the wave model so the the wave model of light or the wave model nature of light will give us a deeper understanding or at least give us a visual understanding as to how light behaves so that we can be able to understand the wave nature of light right uh, first we discuss the reflection of light at the boundary between two medium or media and the refraction which is bending so light can be reflected and once light it reflects from one medium to another sometimes it can happen that light can bend and then when it bends we say that it uh, refracts so it can bend uh, maybe it can bounce let's let's put it in that way light can be able to bounce so it can bounce back from uh, where it comes from or maybe it can bounce to a different direction but let me not add my own words to this and allow the book to explain by itself so they say uh, we first discuss the reflection of light at the boundaries between two media and the refraction which is bending of light so light can be able to bend as it travels from one medium into another now let me just try to make an example of this now suppose you are standing on a window inside of your house and light is moving from one medium which is the air air is also a medium and then light uh, is traveling towards the window of your door and light is is it's reflected inside of your house so uh, whether the entire particles that are traveling in that direction are all reflected or refracted it's something different that we will look at but it is worthy and very important that we we stress the point that uh, light travels from one medium to another and during this traveling light can reflect and light can also bend we use ideas to study the reflection of light as it passes through the lenses and the reflection of light from mirrored surfaces and we see this most oftenly that when you stand uh, in a mirror you see a reflection of yourself so light is reflected now one most important thing you have to be in a room where there is light 
in order for this reflection to take place. So when you are in a dark room and you try to stare on a mirror, you'll never see anything because there is no light that can be able to be uh, reflected. Okay, uh, in chapter 25, we describe how lenses and mirrors can be used to view objects with telescopes and microscopes and how lenses are used in photography okay the ability to manipulate light has greatly enhanced our capacity to investigate and understand the nature of the universe so they say uh we we can be able to manipulate light and then through the manipulation of this light we we are more than able to understand the universe that we are in and this is very true because the universe uh, is made bright by this light so how fundamental would it be if we understand this energy that we call light it's phenomenal that uh, one studies these things okay that's fine let us try to continue in this and now let us look at reflection and refraction what does it mean that light can be reflected and what does it mean that light can be refracted and what does it mean for light to reflect and reflect and refract at the very same time if it is possible of course now the learning objectives that we have there we should be able to state and apply the ray approximation so these are the light rays the photons the packets of light that are traveling at a certain amount of speed and carries a certain amount uh, of energy apply the law of reflection of light so we will be applying the laws when li when light is reflected what laws are there that we can be able to apply in order to perform calculations and also to make predictions and explanations whenever this is happening so it is very very uh, important that we uh, we understand that all right uh, let us continue in this uh, so we will be applying the law of reflection of light and also we will discuss the physical meaning of the refraction of light. So these are the learning objectives that one has to be very much aware of. And then on the side we have the following. The rays which are the packets of light are straight lines perpendicular to the wave front and pointing in the direction of the wave motion. Now, I thought to myself, okay, uh, let me just try to just have a wave for you in, in the form of a sine graph so that we can be able to see exactly how this pattern of a wave emerges. So I'm just going to try and draw a graph and I'm going to use this in order to try uh, and see this from the perspective that is being explained so let's just wait for this okay we we already have that continue in this let me just do this okay let me just have a function can i please just have a function and this function would be uh, y is equals to the sine sorry sine of x and i'm going to draw this graph in such a way that my x exists the maximum should be i'm going to use radians the maximum should be just 180 and i don't have any minimum then right and then let me just try to draw this uh okay it's not doing what i want let me just increase this to 360 and just see what i will have now for example okay let me just do this also because i'm trying to make a point here let me say my y maximum should be two yes right this is what i want now when we are here 
it is very very important that we note some of the few things in here because as we read we have the following let me just do this so as we read in here they say to us the rays are straight lines perpendicular to the wave uh, front and pointing in the direction of the wave motion so this is a wave that we are having here it's a sine wave just to show you that light can also behave as a wave as to whether it behave as a sine wave cosine wave or tangent whatever uh, we will not discuss that but one most important thing that it's worthy of noting here is that we are having the maximum point there the highest point of the wave which we call the crest and the lowest point of the wave which we call the trough and so on and so on but we will discuss many of the things that are happening here i just wanted to show you how a wave looks like if one has forgotten this or you are very much uh, new in in into physics so we read when light traveling in one medium for example it is traveling from the air as a medium and it encounters a boundary okay a barrier leading into a second medium so for example light is traveling from the air and then it enters a a window inside to the very inside of your house so we are saying the process of reflection uh, and refraction can okay so light can be reflected and light can also be refracted and this can happen when light moves from one medium to another so when light travels from one medium to another medium uh, reflection and refraction can take place very very important light can be able to be reflected and light can also be able to bend refracted all right in reflection parts of the light we are here in reflection part of the light encountering the second medium bounces off that medium so they say in reflection part of the light encountering the second medium bounces off that medium it is very important that we understand this in reflection if light is reflected part of the light that is being reflected encountering the second medium it bounces off that medium part of it not all so you have a packet of light that is traveling from one medium entering a second medium and it comes as a packet but now not all of that light will be reflected part of the light will bounce off the medium that it has to enter as to the reasons why the part of the light has to be bounces uh, bounces off and part of the light is reflected it's something else that we will look into but it is worthy of noting that when light travels from one medium to another the part one the part of that very same light will be refracted it will bend it will not enter inside of the second medium that is to say and another part of this light will be reflected it will enter inside of the second medium this is a point worthy of noting very much worthy of noting let me just leave it there in refraction the light passing into the second medium bends through an angle with respect to the normal to the boundary right let me read that once again in refraction the light passing into the second medium bends 
it bends through an angle with respect to the normal to the boundary so you have a boundary now this boundary remember light is moving from one medium and there's no boundary or, or maybe there is a boundary uh, from uh, when it is traveling inside of uh, the air for example there's a boundary there because there are molecules that light has to interact with and it depends whether these molecules are in a liquid solid or gaseous state allowing light to penetrate through them this is this is this is one thing that we can look at because uh, uh, light cannot travel a medium inside of a medium without allowing that medium to uh, take some of this light this is very important the electrons I, i'm just speculating here I, i'm not sure but this is making a lot of sense and i want you to listen to this the molecules suppose that light is traveling in one medium which is the air the molecules and they are let's say this air is in a gaseous state and light is passing through this right when light passes through that medium which is uh, light the particles in a gaseous state will never allow the light to pass through it without leaving some of its energy it has to be excited first and once the particles are excited this uh, 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 gaseous state of water then it can allow some of the, that light to pass through so even within the medium itself that light is traveling to moving to the second medium some of the energy of this light is lost because the molecules has to be excited first before it can allow some of the light to penetrate it this is one logical explanation that i want to make uh, in physics very very important that we we note that Re remember I'm, I'm just making speculations here but i think my theory might be very very correct so looking at the structure of the atoms and the molecules and the energies in which they possess it is very possible that when light travels from a medium which is air and this medium which we call air is in a gaseous state the liquid in a gaseous state for example there's liquid in the atmosphere light cannot pass through this gaseous state without leaving some of its energy the molecules has to be excited and some of the energy is lost along the way right now light has to enter inside a second medium and light now bends light is refracted right now and it is refracted on a boundary because they say in here uh, the light passing into the second medium bends through an angle with respect to the normal to uh, the boundary so when light enters into a second medium whether this medium is more dense or less dense let's leave that so it is entering inside of a second medium and remember there's a boundary there and uh, there's there's a line which we call uh, the line with respect to the normal which forms an angle of 90 degrees now this line the normal through which light will bend when it arrives at that line which we call the normal line when it bends there some of the light will be refracted it will not be allowed to enter inside of the second medium so we can also say that light that bends away and not reflected it is because this light when it enters inside when it is trying to enter inside of a second medium some of this light is used to excite the particles of the second medium 
and only once it is excited it will allow some of the light to pass through it of course we can look at this in different ways i am speaking about only those substances or objects that allows light to pass through it i'm being very specific here because you might ask me what about a wall you know that a wall will never be able to reflect light so i am referring to those objects that are able to reflect light and the very ones that has the capability of allowing light to pass through it when light enters this second medium for example glass there's a line which we call the line of the normal which makes an angle of 90 degrees and when light hits this line this boundary light is reflected some of the light will be reflected and some of the light will bend away it will be refracted so the refracted light not every energy will be absorbed by the particles of the second medium before it can allow some to be reflected i'm saying some of the energy might be used might be used by the medium the second medium itself to excite itself before it can allow some of the portions of light to be reflected this is very very important that i make this assumption you see so it makes sense to me in that way that is why some of the light is refracted and the light that is reflected it's the light once the object itself was has been excited once it has absorbed all the energy that it needs then it allows a light to pass through it only those objects that allows light to penetrate them okay let me continue in this i think that was very lengthy and i'm very sorry you need you see in in physics we need to uh, give ideas and show our way of thinking this is how we grow in physics this is just a hypothesis let me just uh, place it in that way it's just an hypothesis it's just a statement that can be proven right or wrong but this is what i have inside of my head because i understand exactly how the structure of the atom uh, works and the energy levels through which uh, these atoms can rise to so it is very very important that we uh, we make these uh, hypotheses so that we can grow in physics often both the processes occur at the same time which processes reflection and refraction I was just trying to explain both of that. With part of the light being reflected and part of the light being refracted. To study reflection and the refraction, we need a way of thinking about the beams of light, these packets of light. And this is given by the ray approximation. And when we look on this side in here, we can see that light travels in straight lines and suppose this is uh, the uh, the normal through which light will bend and through this normal line that we have let's say this is the light that is refracted and this is the light that is uh, reflected and let's just use these ones as the second medium through which light has to travel uh, inside of so these we are therefore saying these are allowing light to penetrate through them simply because some of the light was absorbed and some was refracted so once the particles of this let's say it's glass once glass has received the minimum energy that allows the atoms that makes it to be excited it is then it allows some of the light to pass through it and is it possible Makeb? is it possible in the basic, that if we can align these glasses maybe a certain distance from one another and we align as many as we can and we try to shine light 
and see whether this light that we shine upon these material or these objects will the entire light when 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 calculated be the same as the light through to the very end object will it be possible and my my conclusion is no it will not be possible why because some of the light will be refracted because when light moves from one medium to another remember light is reflected and some of the light is refracted so the reflection will happen in here and then it will enter inside of this medium and then it will travel through air let's say these gaps are air and remember not all that light that entered here is the same light that comes out so it appears that the energy as the object is moving from one medium to another keeps on decreasing to a significant point that when you have many of these many of these you will never be able to see light at the very last of the tunnel this is quite very very possible remember i am making an hypothesis here remember this is just an i i am i am assuming that that would happen it's just an a a hypothesis but it requires experiments to be t to be carried out in order to verify or justify uh, what i'm saying but i think this is quite a possibility but uh, that is fine let us continue and look at the ray approximation in geometric objects an important property of light that can be understood based on common experience is the following light travels in a straight line path in a homogeneous medium very important so this is a medium that allows light to pass through it until it encounters a boundary between two different materials this is exactly what we are saying light will move from one medium to another and then when it encounters a boundary something else would happen when light strikes a boundary a second medium it is reflected from that boundary it will be reflected remember we are looking at a homogeneous medium the medium that allows light to pass through it so when it allows light to pass through it we are therefore saying uh, it will encounter uh, a boundary when it is moving from one medium to another light will encounter a boundary which is the second medium and uh, what is happening between uh, the two different materials is exactly what we want to investigate when light strikes a boundary it is reflected from that boundary we know that some of the light will be reflected and some will be refracted but let's just say light will be reflect, uh, reflected from that uh, that boundary and then passes into the material on the other side of the boundary or partially uh, does both so light can be reflected as it is moving from one medium to another or light can be refracted or both can transpire at the very same time some of the light can be reflected while some of the light can be refracted and remember before reflection takes place you have to ensure that the particles of the very second medium is excited and once excited it will allow light to pass through it very important allowing light to be reflected all right the preceding observation leads us to uh, the use. Oh, sorry. Uh, the preceding observation leads us to use what is called the ray approximation. So we want to approximate this. What we call the packet of light. We want to investigate that. The ray approximation. How much? of this light is being reflected is the entire light reflected entirely refracted 
or some of the light is reflected and how much of this can we approximate uh, to represent the beams of light so they are saying the preceding observation leads us to use what is called the ray approximation to represent the beams of light as shown in figure 22.1 a ray of light is an imaginary line drawn along the direction of travel to the light beam okay that is fine for example a beam of sunlight passing through a darkened room uh, traces out the path of a light ray we also make use of the concept of wave uh, fronts of the light okay that's fine a wave front is a surface passing through the point of a wave that has the same face and amplitude let's read that once again a wave front is a surface passing through the points of a wave that have the same face and amplitude now let me come here and look into a wave i'm having a wave here and uh, this point we said this is the crest and that point is also a crest this is the lowest point of the wave which we call the trough and this is also the trough so because this is the crest the highest point and that is also the crest the highest point of the wave therefore we are saying these two crests are in phase and these uh, two troughs are also in phase a point worthy of noting very much worthy of noting okay that is fine let's just leave it as it is and then let us continue with this okay uh, we said now uh, where are we okay we are here a wave front is okay something is happening here yeah let me just take it a little bit high a wave front is a surface passing through the points of a wave that have the same face and amplitude okay that is fine remember what the amplitude of a wave is we will look into that let's not uh, rush into things uh, for instance the wave front in figure 22.1 could be surfaces passing through the crest of a wave okay that's fine the rays corresponding to the direction of the wave motion are straight lines perpendicular to the wave front when light rays travels in parallel paths the wave fronts are planes perpendicular to the rays and we can see exactly that now let us try to look at the reflection of light and let's have some reading as to what is happening there right and we are saying when a light ray traveling in a transparent medium a transparent medium being a medium that allows light to pass through it when light rays traveling in a transparent medium encounters a boundary leading into a second medium part of the incident ray is reflected back into the first medium let me reread this once again when a light ray light ray traveling in a transparent medium encounters a boundary leading into a second medium part of the incident ray is reflected back into the first media so here we are light is moving from the first medium the air to a second medium which is the glass and we are therefore saying during this process uh, let me just do this very very fast right sorry and uh, let me just i was just disturbed 
uh, we are saying when a light ray traveling in a transparent medium encounters a boundary leading into a second medium part of the incident ray is reflected back into the first medium right so when light is moving from the air heading towards a second medium which is called uh, glass because it is transparent some of the light is reflected back to the first medium and this is very true this is very true when you are standing in a window where light is reflected not entirely that light is reflected into your eyes or allowed to penetrate through uh, the window to uh, whatever uh, to your skin let's just make for example because when you are standing there and it's too hot you will find that there are photons of light that are striking your body and increasing the kinetic energy of your body so when light moves from one medium to a second medium that is transparent and light is allowed to be reflected no, not all that light is reflected some of the light is reflected back into the first medium which is the air whether it reflects back in the same direction or whether it is reflected back via an angle it's something different that we will investigate but let us continue in this figure 22.2a shows several rays of beams of light okay let me just see that okay we are not yet there in that figure we will see it figure 22.a shows several rays of beam of light incident on a smooth mirror like reflecting surface okay the reflected rays are parallel to one another and we saw that in here we saw that in here that they are parallel to one another because light travels in straight lines all right as indicated in that figure the reflection of light from such a smooth surface is called spec uh, spec the spec the specular reflection so this is a spec uh, the spec peculiar uh, reflection hey english hi jesus this is never our language eh? we were never born into this one so this is the peculiar reflection specular let me just state it like that specular reflection the reflection of light from such a smooth surface which we call the mirror like it is very smooth so that simply means most of the light will be reflected why because of the smoothness of the surface so if you want most of the light to be reflected uh, use a smoother a smoother uh, surface just like in tvs uh, when they design tvs they normally use uh glass why because it is a smooth smooth uh, medium through which light can travel through and most of the light will be reflected but there are many things we can talk about that we can talk about so many things but i'm not into that so we are saying the reflection of light from such a smooth surface uh, a mirror for example is called the specular reflection specular uh, reflection on the other hand if the reflecting surface is rough as in figure 22.2b which we don't see for now the surface reflects the rays in a variety of directions so here is now light moving from the first medium heading towards a second medium and the second medium is very rough so what is going to happen if that uh, second medium is very rough now uh, the surface reflects the rays in a variety of directions so light will be scattered into different directions so we we are not saying here let me reread this for you on the other hand 
if the reflecting surface is rough, so this surface, it is able to reflect light, but it is just rough. So we are speaking about also a medium that is able to reflect light, but it is just a rough surface. Uh, if the reflecting surface is rough, the surface reflects the rays in a variety of directions. Reflection from any rough surface is known as diffuse reflection. So light is diffused in that way. A surface behaves as a smooth surface as long as its variations are small compared with the wavelength of the incident light. This is very important. A surface behaves as a smooth surface as long as its variations are small compared with the wavelength of the incident light. Very, very important. Figure 22.2c and d are photographs of specular and diffuse reflection of laser light respectively. As an example, consider the two types of reflection from a road surface that someone might observe while driving at night. When the road is dry, light from the oncoming vehicles is scattered off, is scattered off the road in different directions. Now let me just try to reread that. When the road is dry, light from the oncoming vehicles, those that are approaching you, is scattered off. It is scattered off the road in different directions. And this is very, very true. This is very, very true. All right. We are saying uh, it's catered off uh, the road in different directions. So diffuse reflection. This is what we call diffuse reflection. And remember we spoke about diffuse reflection in rough surfaces. We said when light travels from one medium to a second medium that is rough but allows light to be reflected, light will be diffused. And then secondly, we are encountering this on a dry road. When the oncoming traffic has the lights on, it uh, 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 turns on the lights, the oncoming traffic, we are saying light will be diffused into different directions. And we need to ask ourselves why. Why is this so? Because remember, our vehicles are made up uh, uh, the 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 the, uh, uh, the front side where you can be visibly where you can visibly see the oncoming traffic is made up of glass, and we said it is a smooth surface allowing most of the light to be reflected. Right? If this is the case, why is it in a dry uh, season when you are on the road? and the oncoming traffic is a shining light upon you, why will light be diffused into different directions? This is something worthy of asking ourselves. When the road is dry, light from the oncoming vehicles is scattered off the road in different directions. So, uh, I want you to, to, to see something here not only the light from the oncoming traffic even the light from uh, the sun itself during a dry hot uh, season we we often encounter this in the road when you are traveling and maybe you are moving for example inside of a car a uh, hundred uh, kilometers per hour or 120 or 60 or whatever the number may be uh, light this is very very important you will see that light because light is moving from one medium to you 
and light is reflected in your eyes you 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 seem to not see clearly what is happening because too much light is reflected into you the reason being that glass allows most of this light to be reflected because it is a smooth on the other hand the road itself is dry and very rough so uh it will allow some of the light to be reflected also so the light that comes from the oncoming traffic uh plus the light that uh strikes the very rough surface of the road uh when this happens uh, light is scattered into different directions some of the light will come into you into your eyes and it will be reflected and some of the light will 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 bounce into different directions so we just have to understand that that when the road is dry uh, light from the oncoming vehicles is scattered off the road in different directions and we call this diffuse uh, reflection and the road is clearly visible so this makes the road uh clearly and clearly visible you are able to see clearly the road that you are traveling on and what causes that what causes that is uh, the diffusion of the reflection of light so uh, it causes what now it causes the road to be visibly very very clear and then one can be able to see clearly what is happening on a dry uh, summer season we are therefore saying so uh, when light is scattered into different directions this opens up a clear view for you in order to see the path that you are traveling on very very important so diffusion uh, during a dry season it's very very important because it allows uh, the driver uh to see clearly in the direction where is it he is heading because the light from the oncoming traffic is scattered in different directions this is just the the conclusion guys please now let us continue in this physics right on a rainy night in contrast to a dry uh summer day on a rainy night when the road is wet the road's irregularities are filled with water because the wet uh, surface is smooth and this is true it's very slippery uh, when 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 the road is wet now the light undergoes a spe specular reflection so light will undergo what we call the specular reflection this means that the light is reflected straight ahead and the driver of a car sees only what is directly in front of him so we are therefore saying on a rainy day you are on the road traveling some distance to a particular place and uh, the light from the oncoming traffic is shone upon you so what is happening now the light is reflected straight ahead this light is reflected straight into you and the driver of the car sees only what is directly uh, reflected in front of him so you will only see the light that is reflected directly to you because light travels in straight lines so during a wet rainy day uh, when there is an oncoming traffic with lights on unfortunately the light is not scattered in different directions the light travels straight unto you and you will only see that which is made visible in your eyes which is the light and you will not clearly see what uh, is on the road and this is what causes many accidents during a rainy day while traveling and uh we 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 we, we uh, it depends on the amount of, of rain that you have if the rain is very 
very strong it is advisable that you just go to the side stop driving just go to the side wait for the rain to be a little bit less and then continue on, on your journey because if you don't do so even unfortunately your wipers will not save you from this because the rate at which light is traveling to your eyes is faster than the wipers that are trying to make uh, the screen clear for you and by that time they are still moving at that slow pace unfortunately you would have caused an accident by that time so the speed through which light travels to your eyes blocking your view blocking your access to see the road it's much more faster than the wipers that are trying to make a path visible for you so this is this is very very important that we understand that during a rainy day light is reflected from the oncoming traffic directly to you and you only see the light that is reflected to you and this blocks your view of seeing the road and you might cause an accident okay that is fine uh, let us continue in this uh, on a rainy night when the road is wet the roads irregularities uh, are filled with water and because the wet surface is smooth uh, the light undergoes a specular reflection this means that the light is reflected straight ahead and the driver of the car sees only what is directly in front of him light from the side never reaches the driver's eye very important this was done via experiments that the light from uh, the side never reaches the driver's eye in this book we concern ourselves only with the specular reflection and we use the term reflection to mean specular reflection so specular reflection meaning that light travels straight directly unto you and guys uh let me just have a, a pause so that i can drink something and then we will continue in this we will so much continue uh in this right uh, wonderful people let's just conclude this uh, they say in this book we concern ourselves only with specular reflection and we use the term reflection to mean specular reflection this is very very important that we we understood that very very important and remember what they said about this uh, about this specular reflection right they said on a rainy night when the road is wet the roads irregularities are filled with water because the wet surface is smooth the light undergoes a specular reflection this means that the light is reflected straight ahead and the driver of a car sees only what is directly in front of him so this is exactly what this book will be about specular reflection the light that is traveling only straight towards uh, an object and this is what we refer to as a specular uh, reflection very very important now we have a picture here that shows light that moves from one medium to another and we have uh, those arrows pointing in that direction showing that the light is uh, being uh, reflected there so light hits a surface and bounces off to a different direction so we can just simply say that the surface here is a, a surface that allows a reflection but it is a rough surface therefore light is catered in different directions but as you can see here light is moving in the same direction and in there life is catered so this is a smooth surface light is reflected most of the light will be reflected and this is a rough uh, surface the light will be scattered in different direction so uh, this would be uh, light is diffused light is diffused 
right and some of the light here is reflected back to the uh the medium the first medium as you can see and here light is a uh, reflected light is uh bent in different direction so light here is scattered light here uh, once it hits the surface it is reflected back to the first uh object remember we are speaking about two mediums we can say uh light is reflected back to the first medium there and then we say a, a schematic representation in figure a uh, this is what we call specular reflection very very important light is reflected uh, in that way remember when we spoke about specular reflection we have just read about that that light uh, is reflected directly towards you as an individual and we refer to that as a specular uh, reflection very very important uh, that we we try to understand that so the driver only the driver of a car sees only what is directly reflected on him and this is what we call specular uh, reflection all right let us build from there and see what we can do all right okay guys uh, let us continue in this so I'm sorry sometimes I pause the video because I, I just get disturbed by some other things. But otherwise, let's continue in this. So we are reading in figure 22.2 a schematic representation of specular reflection in A. Okay. Uh, where the reflected rays are all parallel to one another we can see that and b diffused reflection where the reflected rays travel in random directions so this is what we we are looking at and uh, d photographs of specular and diffused reflection made with laser light so we can see this is a specular reflection all the light is reflected in parallel directions and we have diffused uh, light is catered in different directions and one thing that is worthy of noting in here is that the surface here is a smooth very very dry we can say it's on a dry season and then here the surface is rough very very important so this is specular uh, uh, reflection light is reflected uh, directly if we have to speak in terms of that car light is directly reflected into you and here is diffused light moves in different directions on a rough surface and here we have both re uh, specular and diffused uh, taking place in here so here light is uh, reflected as you can see and here light is uh, diffused so let us continue in our reading and we are therefore saying the following consider a ray a light ray traveling in air and incident at some angle on a flat smooth surface so we consider a light ray traveling in the air and incident at some angle on a flat surface so suppose we have that okay the incident and reflected rays makes an angle uh, theta and uh, theta prime respectively with a line perpendicular to the surface at the point where the incident ray strikes the surface we call this line the normal to the surface and the experiments show that the angle of reflection equals the angle of incident. Now let me try to explain this. The incident ray, the reflected ray and the normal all lie in the same plane. Theta 1 and theta 1 prime. So you have this incident ray that is approaching here a surface. And once it hits the surface the light is reflected 
and there is the reflected ray and remember when the incident light strikes a surface there's a line which we said that is the line of the normal which makes an angle of 90 degrees so we are therefore saying through that line the line of reflection the angle of the incident equals the angle of reflection this is very very important so the angle through which light hits the surface will be the same angle that the uh, the light leaves the surface so we are therefore saying via the normal line the angle of incident equals the angle of the reflected ray and then remember we said we will associate ourselves only uh, with what is called uh, a specular reflection remember that is what we said you may have noticed a common occurrence in photographs of individuals uh, their eyes appear to be glowing red and this is very true red eye occurs when a photographic flash is used and the flesh unit is close to the camera lens light from the flesh unit enters the eye and is reflected back along its original path from the retina this type of reflection uh, back along the original direction is called retro reflection if the flesh unit and the lenses are closer together, retro reflected light can enter the lens. Most of the light reflected from the retina is red due to the blood vessels at the back of the red eye or at the back of your eye, giving the red eye effect in the photograph. Let us try to read this with understanding and explain what is happening here. You may have noticed a common occurrence in photographs of individuals. Their eyes appear to be glowing red. A red eye occurs when a photographic flash, that light that uh, the, the camera makes, is used and the flesh unit is close to the camera lens okay that is fine light from the flesh unit enters the eye and is reflected back along its original path from the retina so the light enters the retina and is reflected back along its uh, path of travel this type of reflection uh, back along the original direction is called retro reflection so the light enters the retina and is reflected back uh, via uh, it is reflected back uh, from the direction where it was coming from and this type of reflection is called retro reflection so when you take a peek using a flash camera the light enters your eye and this light during that flashing is reflected back and when this light is reflected back uh, by the retina uh, this type of reflection the light entering your retina and being reflected back uh, is called uh, retro reflection this is exactly what it means if the flash unit and the lens are closer together retro reflected light can enter the lens most of the light reflected from the retina is red due to the blood uh, vessels at the back of the eye so when you look into the peak uh, you will find that you 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 appear to have red eyes and this mostly happens in the dark when you take a peek in the dark for people who, who have uh, smart cameras those who have uh, cameras they know that when you look into that peak your eyes appears to be red what is happening what is the phenomenon behind this now during the flashing 
when when the camera takes in this uh, this peak which is you light is reflected so uh light is reflected back to where it is coming from the original source right so light is traveling from the camera to you and reflected from your retina back to the lens now when you look into this peak you will find that your eyes appears to be red why is this so this is because of the cells around the retina which has a red color so the red color will be scattered into uh, your eyes making the flesh uh, making your eyes to be uh, appearing to be red when you look into this peak why is that so it is because the retina is red due to the blood vessels at the back of the eye. So there are blood vessels at the back of your eye. If I take a knife now, if we have to make a practical example, suppose I take a knife now and, 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 and I stab your eye, there will be blood that comes out. As a sign of showing that at the back of your retina, you have these uh, 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 blood vessels there. So during the flashing of the camera, what is happening there, the red light is scattered on top of your eyes and it makes your eyes to appear red. And not every part of your eye is red. Please, the black part even on the camera will appear black with some uh, red scattered around your eyes as a result of the red blood vessels at the back of the retina. That is why in your photographs, uh, mostly when you take these pics at night, your eyes will appear to be red. Please, please. Uh, that's what exactly is happening but what is important worthy of noting uh, when we speak of specular reflection you should always know that the angle of incident equals the angle of reflection along the line of the normal and this normally happens on a smooth surface remember we are concerned with a uh, specular reflection light is reflected in parallel lines okay let us continue in this and we say now there are some questions that need us to explain some of the things the colors of water in ripples at sunset why uh, is it so an observer on the west facing a uh, beach of a large lake is watching the beginning of a sunset so an observer on the west facing beach of a large lake is watching the beginning of a sunset the water is very smooth except for some areas with small ripples so they say the water is very smooth except for some areas with small ripples the observer notices that some areas of the water are blue and some are pink why does the water appear to be different or why does the water appear to be uh, of different colors in different areas and we want to try and explain that and they say the different colors arise from specular and diffused reflection the smooth areas of the water will uh, specularly reflect the light from the west which is uh, the pink light from the sunset and the areas with the small ripples will reflect the light diffusely so light from all parts of the sky will be reflected onto the observer's eye because more because most of the sky is still blue at the beginning of the sunset these areas will appear to be blue let me just try to reread this once again why does the water appear to be different colors in different areas the different colors arise from specular and diffused reflection so what does that mean it simply means some of the light is reflected in parallel directions 
and some of the light is reflected and scattered in different directions. That's what we learned about specular and diffused reflection. Now they are trying to explain. The smooth areas of the water will specularly reflect the light from the west. So the smooth areas, because this is exactly what we, we said. We said the smooth areas, that's where we have specular reflection. And here we have diffused reflection. So they are saying the smooth areas of the water will specularly reflect the light from the west, which is the pink light from the sunset. The areas with the small ripples will reflect the light diffusely. So light from all parts of the sky will be reflected into the observer's eyes. So this is very true. So they are saying the light from all parts of the sky will be reflected into the observer's eye because that light there will be scattered because most of the sky is still blue at the beginning of the sunset these areas will appear to be blue so this is the explanation that physics provides and then guys i'm going to break it here in the second tutorial we will look at the double reflecting light ray